I've had turbo vehicles for over two decades, and I am so super excited for you and your new Freedom Machine. Congratulations. Do you have a couple seconds for me to tell you something about how to make them last longer, go a little bit faster? Check it. First turbo vehicle I owned was a uh, 242 Volvo 1984 model. Uh, my buddy knew about it for sale, and he said, man, you got to go check it out. When I hit the brakes on that thing, that car would dart left and right. And when I hit the gas on it, it'd go left. <laughs> now, first off, if you can relate to any of that, well, let me tell you something. It's time for you to maintain that vehicle. It's time for you to upgrade the suspension, the tires, the brakes. Give them all a good checkout. Make sure everything's fine. Because I got to tell you, one thing that I've noticed amongst everybody that'll never be said. Hey, man, check out my new turbo vehicle. Can you help me make it go slower? And another thing, uh, you know, commonly uh, falsified fact checked statement that people will tell you and it gets censored and this and that and the other. Um, boost just isn't as fun when you're dead. It's not. And there's another thing that people will never brag about, no matter where you are, is the boost that that ambulance made when it carried him to the hospital. It's just things that you don't hear. So I'm just letting you know, keeping you aware. You know, gotta let the people know. Come on. Hey, you're here. You're here at Turbo World. Let's go ahead and put our mind in the right frame and go ahead and assume that we're going to make it faster as we continue to own it. So we gotta make sure that safety's on point. You understand me? You can't have your passengers in there and have them, you know, worried about safety equipment and all this stuff. And when, you know, and then you, they're like, hey, have you checked your brakes? Have you checked this? Have you checked that? No, I don't, I don't know. Nah, man, not cool. Make sure you stop safe. That's the first step. And the first step of really having any car is really making sure it's safe. It's not just a turbo car thing for me. Uh, a lot of people will forget about this. They will be more focused on uh, upgrades like wheels and stuff that appear to look better. Make the car look better. That's fine. If everything's in good working order. That's great. But if it's not, uh, you got to fix it now. Or as soon as you can, because what's going to happen is these problems, man, they're going to pile up. And it's going to be crazy. And you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm so bombarded with these issues. I can't deal with them right now. I'm just ignoring it. And we just turn the key and drive. You know, and then you get stuck with a repair bill at the end of the year because it won't go anymore. And it's leaking so much fluid. That's just astronomical because... You've waited all this time. So, hey, budget for your stuff. Check out your routine maintenance. Make sure it's been done. Your car's been serviced. Your truck's been serviced. And it's proper service intervals. Check with the manufacturer. Do some research. Run some car facts on it and see if the maintenance has been updated. Also, remember, I'm not your parents, but I'm going to tell you what I know from my experience. Drive the vehicle easier. You work on it less. It's a proven fact. I hate it as much as you do. But the harder you drive it, the more you're going to work on it. It's a simple fact of life. I don't care what the make is, what the model is, what the year is even. It doesn't matter. We, unfortunately, as humans, need to set our egos down and realize that we aren't perfect and nor is anything that we create. It's just not perfect. Besides our children, of course. Our children are always perfect. So, I mean, Now, keep in mind, if you uh, slide off the side of the road because your engine locks up because you didn't change your oil for 50,000 miles, then uh, that's a maintenance and safety concern that you could have prevented. So make sure to do research on what you're driving. Or you get in it and joyride and tear it up, and then you're like, oh, golly, i got to fix this. It's a lot of money. I'm just going to have to sell it and go back to normally aspirated life for a little while because this is in the control. I've been asked this over and over and over again, and I've been uh, 
confronted with people. I get calls. People in person ask me, hey, man, I just got a turbo vehicle. What do you recommend? Should I get an intake? Should I get an exhaust? I give them the answers they don't want to hear. But at the end of me giving them the answers they don't want to hear, they're a lot more informed and a lot more educated. Only because I have experience. Only because I've done it the wrong way so many times. And my experience is this. Make sure safety is first. Fix all the safety equipment. If it doesn't drive right, you can't control it right, deal with that first. You don't need any more power. It's working within manufacturer specs. Then you can start modifying it. But before you start modifying it, you need three, three, three tools. Gauges. Not because they look cool. Not because you want to be Joe Ricer. No. Come on. We're adults here. The first tool is the boost gauge. You need to know how much boost the vehicle's running, how much it's supposed to run, and you need to know if it's running normally. You may find that when the temperature drops, it gets colder outside, the humidity gets less, the boost changes, the car feels different. Why does it feel different here and it doesn't feel different here? Well, you can watch your boost gauge and see why. Colder air is more dense and the vehicle creates more boost as a result of that. Other things may happen like a boost coupler may blow off or something crazy like that and your boost gauge never comes up off of zero and you're like, oh, okay, well that explains why it's not going anywhere. The turbocharger isn't working for some reason. Let me open the hood and see if I can find a hose that's loose or blown off. A boost is the pressure that a turbocharger feeds the engine and it's kind of like the food that the turbocharger creates that the engine makes so much power with. And the food that it creates is air. A lot of it multiplies it, pressurizes it, puts it in this beautiful little package, and gets it so angry, feeds it to the engine. And the engine loves it at first, but the more you floor it and the more you keep on it and the more you hammer it, the hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter it gets infinitely until we're on the side of the road, we're on the phone. Coolant's blowing out, there's smoke everywhere, everything stinks. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Nobody told me that you couldn't just hold the accelerator on the floor for 15 minutes straight. Well, <laughs> I guess I'm going to be that guy to tell you, don't, don't hold, hold it on, on the, the floor, floor for 15, 15 minutes. minutes. Even an NA, normally aspirated car, NA, standing for normally aspirated vehicle, you can't pound on it for 15 minutes at a time without expecting something to be damaged as a result of that. Because engines create heat, and they're a big, huge pump, and as they make more air and fuel and mix, they create a lot of heat. They can't get rid of it fast enough, most of the time, in an extreme situation. Turbo cars are a lot worse, even in stock platform. You could probably burn just about any car down, flooring it for a minute. Give or take. You know, technology's come a long ways. It's the plain, simple fact of things. If you keep it floored, you're going to melt it. You're going to blow a head gasket, burn piston rings, hammer a rod bearing, a bend a rod, all kinds of crazy stuff. Unless you've made precautions aftermarket to compensate for all these things happening. You're going to burn it down. So these three tools are going to help you not burn it down. The boost gauge, knowing that it's not over boosting. An air fuel gauge. An air fuel gauge tells you the air fuel ratio of what the motor's doing. The engine is getting fed air by the turbocharger, it needs to also get fuel. If it doesn't get the right ratios, then it'll run hotter or colder and it'll be more efficient or less efficient. And as a result of that, you'll feel it in the seat for the power it makes or doesn't make. And you'll hear it sometimes with your ears, it sounds like paper clips in the engine. You know, it's knocking. And it's just like a little flutter, like literally a paper clip in the engine just That's not good. Air fuel ratio gauge will tell you what your air fuel ratio is and if it's on the right track. Usually idling at 14.7, 14.5 air fuel ratio for most gas motors. And then on the gas, somewhere around 11.0 to 12.2, anywhere in there, depending on if it's turbocharged or normally aspirated. You know, where you're at and a lot of other variables, but just randomly speaking. If you want more details on this and more specific details for your area, then check with your local dyno tuner. Check with your local speed shop. Local tuner guy, he will give you some information. Uh, if 
if you want more information about the topic, you can also check HP Academy online. They have a course that teaches you all about the tuning of these things. And where these things are supposed to be, what the parameters are, why, how, on and on. A lot of information, great information. I took two of their classes, they're awesome. Highly recommended. I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not paid to do their advertising. Just giving you some free info. The third gauge, EGT, exhaust gas temperature. Exhaust gas temperature. Did you know that most RC hobbyists, that is radio controlled hobbyists or radio controlled cars, adults have really high powered cars, gasoline, electric. The gasoline ones specifically, these guys tune with an infrared thermometer. They shoot it down on the head of it, on the head of the motor, and they get a temperature back. Okay, let me turn the screw or let me turn it back. To create whatever air fuel mixture they're going for to cool, to get that temperature that they're looking for on that motor. Having said this, EGT is vital to the lifeblood of your motor and the longevity of your motor. EGT, you got to know when too much is too much. you got to know when to lift, right? The only way you really know when to lift for your specific application is with these three gauges. Boost gauge, air-fuel ratio gauge, EGT gauge. These are tools. So make sure to get the best, most reliable tools for your application. These are not to display out for everybody else to see. These are for you to see. For you to be able to see when you're driving without being distracted. So be careful of the placement with the lights at nighttime, all that stuff. You gotta be mindful of it. It's a little bit of a art, but it takes a lot of thought. I'm gonna leave you with a couple ideas. Cool down. Cool down is important for a turbocharged car. What is cool down? Let's say you're going somewhere, you're going to the store arrive in the store parking lot, your tires quit rolling, you dive for that key, cut it off, dive out the door, lock the car, and you're gone. You split. I'm out. I got to get groceries. I need a steak. I'm done with this day, right? Well, here's the problem with all that. You were done with this day already about 25 minutes ago, and you had a little heated discussion with somebody down the street and some little hot import, and you made it well known that you had the superior foot pound. What? That was only five seconds ago? Five seconds ago. I'm sorry. That was five seconds ago. You let them know. And you were boosting hard. And you come in the parking lot. And you... Boom! That turbo is still spinning at 200 and some odd thousand miles an hour. Not really. It's spinning at like... 200 some thousand RPM. And you just shut the oil supply off. Go into it. And that's what feeds it. That's what keeps it spinning and nice and smooth. You cut that oil supply off, it's just metal on metal with no layer of oil. And all things are out the window. That's number one. Number two is everything's hot and boiling and popping. You hear that pop when you turn that key off when it's real hot? Pop, pop. All that popping, that popping is thermal expansion. Metal is heating up and contracting. Oil is boiling inside of lines. When oil boils inside of a turbocharger line, especially a return oil line, usually the lines are about my pinky size to my thumb size, they can clog up quickly. You know, a couple 12, 14 times of hot shutting off, heavy, heavy throttle, and then just shut right off. <laughs> the oil is going to clog up in there. It's going to boil off. It's like, you know food you cook for too long or oil you put in the pan and cook for too long without putting food in it you have a problem getting the oil off the pan and it's a, that's a no stick surface are you kidding me same deal so you're hurting the machine you're hurting the machine you're taking life out of it you're taking the longevity out of it the easy thing to do is to not be spiritedly driving it five ten minutes before you arrive at your destination first off or if that's not an option you can Sit, let it run for a minute, let everything cool down a little bit, let the turbo speed come back down a little bit, and turn it off. That's cool downs. Cool downs are very important. Cool downs really extend the life of all the components if you practice proper cool down. Big deal. Bonus tip, I'll let you go. I know you got a lot of stuff to do. Really appreciate you hanging out with me. 
and letting us learn together. Because, you know, I learn this stuff, but sometimes I forget. So if I keep on telling you, then I'll keep on remembering it a little bit better. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I keep telling myself. So check it out. If you know of a spot that you like driving down, it's in a valley, and there's a lot of trees and a lot of wooded area on both sides of it, I want you to check it out with your new, with your new turbocharged vehicle. I want you to roll your windows down, and I want you to feel the difference when you roll through that valley, the temperature of the air with your hands. I want you to smell the air. I want you to feel the difference. And then I want you to stomp the throttle and feel the difference in response of boost right down in the bottom of that valley. And I want you to tell me what your reaction is. Now be safe, abide all the public laws. I'm not telling you to break any laws here. I'm just telling you to experience a little thing. A little phenomenon I call trees. They create air for us. They also create air for vehicles. So check it out. So let me know down in the description below what your experience is with trees. Don't run into them. Hey, keep your turbo world. See you next week.